My name is Carolyn Jones and I was a Peace Corps volunteer in India 44, 1967 to 1969. And I served in um, Maharashtra, uh, 240 miles southeast of Bombay. What There are so many stories. Peace Corps changed my life. It was the most wonderful experience of my life, even though there were some close call stories. But uh, one of them is when we landed, and got off the plane, it was like a blast furnace. Immediately, the cultural shock was temperature. Uh, I love the food, I still do. When we arrived, uh, after we did some in-country training, we uh, took our trunks, got on our bus, and went to our village, Vita, Vitas, and then uh, there was that was during the monsoon season, and there was the the bus had to stop and the creek was now overflowing and we had to wait for the other bus to come to meet us and the people on that bus would wade through the creek and we the other. Well, I was probably the tallest one there. I didn't think any problems. I started to go across the, the creek and it was raging. I had my backpack, which had my very special things in it, which I had to let go. And I had to grab the people in front and back. And we were always told that you don't look at somebody in the eye. It's not the right thing to do. You don't touch. But this was life or death. So we all grabbed one another. We made it across this raging stream. And it was a wonderful feeling of, even though we lost a lot of things, it was that feeling of the instant bonding, and, uh, and that's my story really, is the bonding. I still feel it in my heart. Nancy Samuel, I was in uh, Peace Corps India 44A in 1969 to, no, I'm sorry, 1967 to 1969, and I was stationed in the state of Maharashtra, the village of Nandura. Kathy Sohn, I was from Greensboro, North Carolina. I lived in Rissode, India. Uh, Bombay District and I was in a rural public health project. We did a, a vaccination project. Hi, I'm Susie Spence from Rochelle, Florida. I was in India as a Peace Corps volunteer uh, from 1967 until 1969. I worked in Balod District in the state of Maharashtra. Carolyn Adler, India 44A, 1967 to 69. I was in Maharashtra um, doing rural public health and nutrition. Uh, worked in a village health center and uh, helped uh, with uh, delivering babies and uh, at the um, general uh, health center in our village in Nandura. Diane Jeffcott. I was in India in 1967 through 69. I lived in a small village called Balod and I worked in public health and family planning. Hi, I'm Lynn Graham. I was at, served as a volunteer in India from 1967 to 1969 in India, in the state of Maharashtra, where Bombay is the capital, but far away from there in a little dusty village doing public health work. My name is Gerard Wilson. I was in India 44. I was stationed in India in the Rajasthan province and we were working in agriculture. And the years? 1966 to 19, 1967 to 1969. I'm Tom McDermott. I was in India 1967 to 69 in southern Rajasthan on the Gujarat border. I worked in an agriculture group and uh, deal, dealt mainly with uh, tribal villages. Okay, my name's Cliff Lopez. I served in India from 1968 to 1970, uh, near in the state of Orissa. Going to India was really a big step for me. I mean, there was nothing there that uh, reminded me of home, nothing that was exactly the same, and it was very difficult to make an adjustment. You know, when I got there, I pretty much felt like, uh, well, my frame of mind was that everybody in the world lived the same way that my parents and I did, and if they didn't, they were wrong. So having that attitude made it very difficult to adjust to a culture like that where nothing was the same. The food wasn't the same. The 
the way they drove, the way they went to the bathroom, the way they ate, nothing was the same. And so it was really a difficult adjustment. I had, you know, very good group and good support from uh, the, the other volunteers, but it was very difficult. I tell people about it, uh, my memory of it is that it was very difficult all the time I was there and I very difficult for living and getting by but ever since I left I've loved it. It was just I didn't realize how much I had learned and how much my horizons had broadened through that experience. crazy one afternoon and I go, okay, I got to get out of here. I've got to do something. And so uh, I looked at my watch and there was a train that left in about a half an hour. And I said, okay, if I get on my bike and just go as fast as I can, right now I can make it to the train station and I can get out to the beach. Mm -hmm. So it's the rainy season and I put my uh, umbrella over my handlebars and across my front tire like that. And so I'm riding as fast as I can, and I come to one of those turning circles, you know, that they have in England, and they had them in India also, but they're all washboardy. So I you know, go hauling ass around that turn, hit the washboards, my umbrella comes up, comes back down inside the spokes, locks the wheel, and I go right over, flat on my back, and here's a Mercedes-Benz truck. Oh my gosh. Right here, and an Indian guy, walks up to me with his umbrella and his dhoti on and he goes, you must be coming from America. And I go, ha 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 ha. He says, America is a very fast country. India is a very slow country. You must be going very slow in India. <laughs> and so I threw my bike onto a rickshaw and got to the train station, ran in there, it was three hours late. Oh <laughs> oh. So that was a pretty typical Indian story. Wow, <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. Wow. Everything that, that was probably one of the most difficult things to do. That was actually one of my friend's take on the, his experience there is that uh, the hardest thing to learn was to not do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're so dialed into being busy all the time, mm -hmm. and they're not there. Mm -hmm. And if you try and be that way there, you'll really go crazy. My name is Elsa Fredham. I was in India, actually in Madhya Pradesh, from 1968 to 1970. And people would ask me where in India I was, because it's fairly large. I would say, think of India like a diamond. And if you write the word India across the wide part, I was under the D. So that she and I um, uh, had a 4-H group of maybe half a dozen boys. And yes, it was only boys. The girls weren't interested in it or weren't allowed or whatever. And we, these kids were living in, as I said, in the middle of India, pretty much right in the middle and had re really not even been to the, their, the capital of their state, of Madhya Pradesh. They'd never been to Bhopal, never been on a train. They just walked to school and then just hung around where they were. Well, we decided we'd take them to New Delhi. So we raised money for their train tickets and did all kinds of things locally. And, and they got, only four of them went, but um, we got them to New Delhi. We got in to see Mrs. Gandhi. She would have groups in every, you know, every morning, you come at 9, you come at 9.30, you come, she did this on a regular basis. So we have a picture of all of us with Mrs. Gandhi, and then we got, when we got back home, I said to the kids, well, what was, what was the best thing about this trip? We got to ride in an elevator. <laughs> so you never know, you just never know. <laughs> My name is Alan Jamerick and I was in India 
1968, 69, unfortunately I had to leave early on a medical evacuation because of several bouts of dysentery. I served in the northern Indian state of Haryana in a little town called Gula near a bigger town called Karnal. And the um, project was uh, doing helping farmers with tube well, so a tube well project. Um, stories, I just have, the, it was the highs and lows. You know, the, the bugs, the heat, uh, lack of uh, sanitation and all. But the good memories were just meeting a lot of interesting folks from uh, Sikhs, a lot of Sikhs where I was, and that was interesting. Sikhs, and watching how Sikhs and Hindus got along together, and uh, that was very, very interesting. You know, all the experience was just wonderful, and I'd go back again if my old body would handle it. <laughs>